evening, everybody. We're back on the scene, Connecticut sports scene with Joe Ryan. Tonight, we have Stanford's Cordell Booker and Ahmad Mickens. Cordell, an up-and-coming middleweight, our super middleweight, what's it, super welterweight and middleweight. Yeah. yeah. And his coach and mentor, Ahmad Mickens, who also runs the Revolution uh, Training in Stanford. How you guys doing tonight? I'm good. Thanks Great. for having us here. Nah, thanks for coming. Now, you're just coming off your uh, 14th win as a professional. Take me through what it's been like as, so far as a professional stuff in your, your career. Uh, the pros have been, it's been, it's been good so far to me. Uh, it's a little different than the amateurs, so that's why I was kind of hesitant to say. It's like, it's up and down, because you want to fight, well, I want to fight a lot. And as an amateur, I fought on average, I want to say 30 fights a year. Wow. So going from 30 fights a year to fighting four or five times a year, it's like, it's time where I'm just like, I'm bored. <laughs> you know, I won't fight. And Ahmad, you were a boxer yourself. So, I mean, when you see him, how he's progressed, mm -hmm. I mean, you took you to start working with him as an amateur? Yes, uh, well, since the beginning. Okay, when you look at, at, at Cordell today to what he was at the beginning, how has he impressed you? What have you seen him improve with, and, and, and what are the things that uh, you've seen that impressed you the most? Um, well, what impressed me initially was uh, his work ethic um, and his, you know, some of his, like, uh, you know, the fact that he's a lefty um, and, and his determined spirit. You know, he had a determined um, spirit. So what, I, what I've what i seen is the, um, you know, because potential is just potential, right? Unless it's realized, right? So I've seen his potential realized. I see, I've seen him progress into what I thought he could be. You know what I mean? Even in, in, in there was a lot of bumps in the road during that time, you know, which is to be expected. But, you know, he's angst at the call, um, his work, ethic has only improved you know it's you know so I mean I, I saw this for him and so it is a pleasure to see that progression to see what it looks like see him stay the course well let's take it back to the beginning because I you know I, I again watched that that documentary on you last night the boxer which is fantastic everybody should see it who's the the director of that I, I forget his Craig name Cutler. yeah it's a fantastic story of you and the, and the judge and of course Ahmad who helped you let's go back a little bit over that part of your life and what it was like when you two got together for me I was I was getting in trouble so during basketball I knew I wanted to box but I had basketball so I said I was gonna box after I finished basketball finished basketball Still was in the street, didn't go to boxing. Then I got arrested, and then I said, all right, I got to give up this street stuff. Let me go to the gym. <clears throat> so I went to his gym, and I just, I liked it from the day, the first day I walked in, I spoke to him, and that was it. it like, I never, I never left, I never went to another gym, so I, I didn't even know what to expect other than what I got from him. What was it that attracted you to boxing? Because boxing, you know, after kind of the Tyson years, and, I mean, you got Pacquiao, you got Mayweather now, but it wasn't being covered as well. For you as a young kid growing up, I mean, I was around when boxing was one of the big sports. You watched Friday Night Sports, HBO, had everything. What attracted you to boxing? Who got you into boxing to begin with? Uh, it's funny. Well, I kind of got myself into boxing, really. So I used to watch wrestling. I thought wrestling was real and boxing was fake when I was young. So I thought The Rock was really doing that stuff to people. So I was like, The Rock is the best. And then people started telling me like, yo, boxing is real and wrestling is fake. Mm. So then at that time, I started looking up other guys like, wow, okay. That's, that's how I found out who Winky Wright was, Jermaine Taylor, Bernard Hopkins. And I was like, okay, I kind of like this boxing stuff. So. I went to a kickboxing gym, because that was the only gym that was around in Stanford at the time. Right. When I was in middle school, and I just didn't like the kicking thing. So right. I was like, I'll wait till there's a boxing gym, or I'll figure out something. And I always kind of just watched boxing from there, but just never really got into it because of basketball. And hey, Amon, how did you get into boxing? You were out in, in you grew up in Newark. Right. Uh, what drew you into boxing? Well, um, 
you know, growing up in Newark, New Jersey, I was living in a, um, in a housing project called Ivory Hill, and they actually had a boxing gym in the basement. So, you know, I, 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 I used to hang around the gym and stuff like that, but I never okay. fought as an amateur. I was just a fan. Okay. You know, I used to work out a little bit when I was younger. And all through the years, you know, I was exposed to boxing, but never really experienced it until I moved to Connecticut and wanted to, you know, just, you know, deepen my knowledge of it. So I went to the city to get a certification. And while I was getting a certification, I started like just training like a boxer. And then I was like, oh, I started sparring. And I was like, oh, let me try to, you know, because my background is basketball, but, you know, I needed something to stimulate that competition. And so, you know, I would just, I asked the guy that I was doing a certification, do you think I could do the golden gloves? And just, you know, just, just, just so I could say I did it. And then I, I went through that year. I mean, it was a while, it was a long time ago. I, I, I did the Golden Gloves that year and I lost in the open in the preliminary rounds. And I was just like, I wish I wouldn't have lost because now I know I'm never gonna stop until, you know, I win it all. You know what I mean? And that's, that's how I got into it. And, and, and in, like initially I got into competing because I wanted to teach it. Right. You know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. that I wanted to become a professional boxer or anything like, but I just wanted to just deepen my knowledge so I can teach it to others because, you know, I'm 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 really good at motivating and pushing people to uh, to accomplish their goals. When and this is for both of you, uh, both of you have similar backgrounds in sports. Both of you played basketball and then got into boxing. Was there something about being the individual, controlling it by yourself, compared to a team? I mean. Team, a lot of times you're standing around, you're you're on a bench, you're, you're you know you're, you feel like you're frustrated because you're not even a part of the action. Sometimes, mm -hmm. is there something that drove you to being boxing because it's all about you? You, you want to go first on that? Um, you can go ahead. Yeah. Well, for me, it, yeah, it was the it was the individual part of it. I spent so much of my life being a, a team player um, and that I needed something that was just solely on me. You know, I needed to work hard. I couldn't take plays off. I couldn't take time off. I needed to give it all, everything I had. Because in basketball, if, if I got tired, I knew if I just didn't play defense, there's a guy behind me who's got to <laughs> right. Mark Ellis going to block the shot. <laughs> right. So with, with boxing, it really isn't that. You know, I have to keep my mind going and my body going. I need to really figure out a way to take breaks or, you know, or I had to just actually get in shape and condition myself and not take those breaks. Um, so I love the fact that it's only me. Nobody can mess it up for me. If I fail, it's my fault. And if I win, <laughs> I did it. Right. You know, I don't want anybody else to have that control over it. And, and for you, I mean, do you see a lot of that when you're training boxers and people that need that individual stimulation? Right, but it's not for everyone. Right, right? Not, everyone can't can't uh, can't step up to that challenge. Um, you know, I, I I too like the individual accountability. Like you know, pushing myself. You know, you know, I, I've always been self motivated, ambitious. So it was like, and a perfectionist in a sense. So you know, it helped it helped um, help me um, stimulate that part of myself. But boxing is also kind of like a team sport too, right? Because it's a coached sport, so you're accountable. So it, even at, in those moments that you don't feel accountable to yourself, you feel accountable to your coach and, you know what I mean? So, right. you, you know, and you know that, you know, you're strategizing with somebody. Of course, the execution is up to you. So there's more pressure for you to, to you know, to maintain state of course and, 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 and to step up to the plate. But, you know, you also, it's like one of those sports you, you can't see it all yourself. You you need a little bit of guidance and direction and stuff like that. So it so it stimulated both, right? You had yeah. that individual, but you also had it's also a team aspect. Is is other moving parts that 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 come into play when it comes to how many to people boxing. do you have training at Revolution with you right now? Or that's actually fighting. Yeah, uh, probably about 12, 12 um, active um, fighters. What sets them apart? You said about his determination, the fact that he's a lefty, but you're not going to always get a lefty, but the determination. What are the type of things? I mean, of course, people will say hand speed, that kind of stuff, footwork. But what other kind of things are you looking at for uh, to make him seem trainable to you? 
to make an individual seem yeah. trainable. I, I gave him this 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 analogy when we when he first started boxing. I said it was a hundred people that came into the gym, right? <laughs> Just factor out ninety five percent of. That's that that that's, that will actually have what it takes uh, enough of the ingredients to make up a boxer. Ninety five percent get rid of out of a hundred. Really, there's only five that you go that you got there, and out of that five, they have to they have to have a good work ethic. They have to be determined. They have to be um, disciplined. You know what I mean? Yeah. They have to have talent. Right. You know, so you got to have some of those major ingredients for them to have any success in this sport. You know what I mean? I mean, courage. Right. You know, things like that. You know, maybe a little bit of recklessness. You know what I mean? You know, those are the type of things and ingredients you're looking for in a boxer. But more than anything, you're looking for accountability. If you got somebody that, you know, I, I'm really big on that. You know, they say they're going to be in the gym. They don't show up. I already know this, this is a person that don't really want what they say they want. Because, you know, you, you've been around a long time. Yeah. I, I have a saying, I've never seen a person not get what they say they really want. You know what I mean? Right. If you really want something, you're going to do whatever it takes to get it. And, and if I don't see that, it's, I don't want to waste my time because you can waste a lot of time in this sport. When you first got into, into the ring, when you st first started getting into training, was there anything that surprised you a little bit? And you were like, uh, I don't know, where were we? Or were you like, you just ate it up? <clears throat> uh, surprised me. I, I, I think I was surprised about the level of skill it took to be, to actually be, you know, a really good fighter. Uh, that, that was something that surprised me. That surprised me because I went from being able, like, I was out getting the fights when I was in school, stuff like that, mm. to being like, I came into a gym thinking I could really punch hard, mm. <laughs> right? And then you go and you punch a guy in the ring and he's like, all right, give me another one. You're like, <laughs> That was my hardest punch. I, I don't know if I could punch you any harder. <laughs> and then, you know, like, I realized fast, I don't really punch that hard. <laughs> you know, that's just ha what's been happening for people who can't fight. <laughs> right. So, you know, it taught me a lot about, about myself. Um, it humbled me fast, very fast. <laughs> Between the time he first showed up at the gym and his first amateur fight, how long did it take you to get Cordell ready to do it? His first fight? Yeah, his first fight. Well, the story goes, like my story, you asked him earlier about how he got into the boxing gym. Right. I remember him uh, coming into, because I had, I had a few fighters at the time, and they were really, they were good fighters, and they were accomplishing some, and I was fighting myself. He came into the gym, and he was taking just classes, and I just thought it odd that somebody his age was taking classes like you know you know with the adults all the time would stay after class for a few hours you know sitting down hitting the bag coming asking questions and stuff like that and i'm just thinking i'm like man this is a good looking kid he's definitely not <laughs> he's not a socially awkward kid right. like why is he in this gym every day for like 3 hours and i just you know at the time, my wife used to work at the front desk, and I went and I asked, and I said, you know, what's up with this kid? He said, like, three hours. And she's like, oh, he really wants to fight. He wants to fight. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I mean, no one told me. So I went to him. I said, you want to fight? He's like, yeah, that's why I'm here. I really want to fight. So I was like, okay. And like I said, I'm not into wasting my time. Right. You know, because everyone says they want to fight. Yeah. So I, so I had a sparring show coming up. And I said, okay, I know how to see if this guy is really serious about what he said. I said, I got a sparring show, won't you come? And he came. And then I was like, all right, do you think, do you want to, do you want to spar? He was like, yeah, I want to spar. I said, okay, so I put him in the ring to spar. <laughs> a kid that actually used to be, used to come to my gym, and he was at another gym in New Rochelle. And I was like, oh, you know, spar him. And, he, and when he sparred, I saw, you know, he was confident, you know what I mean? He, you know, he was brave. He, I was like, oh, he's a lefty. He showed, he showed a lot of skill set that I was just like, okay, all right. So then, right after that sparring session, which he dominated, I said, you know, I'm gonna start working with him. I was like, you know, teaching him not to slap with his punches, to put his knuckles on his punches, smacked you know, just a like a lot. Smacked him up. He, he smacked a lot. He punched him up. Smacked him up. Smacked the whole lot. So 
So, uh, you know, just started training them. And then maybe a few months after that, uh, uh, a boxing show came up. And I asked him, did, would, he, would he want to um, um, fight in this show? And we went. He did the show. Uh, it was a, you know, he fought up. He fought a bigger guy with a lot more experience and who was a lefty, I believe, like he was. Yeah. Oh. Right? So it was, a, it was a lot of, it was a big challenge for him. Um, he fought. He lost that fight. But in that fight, I saw a lot, right, you know? Yeah. He, he, like, like he said, you know, individuals coming off the street box and they're front runners. So right. He, Came out really good, and then mm -hmm. realized, oh, you're in the fight. It's, you got two <laughs> right. more rounds. So the second round, it was like, wasn't so good for him. And then in the last round, he rallied. You know what I mean? I said, okay, he lost. He was really upset. And, you know, I was just telling him, like, oh, you did really good. You know, um, it's something to work, work on. We got something to work with. And I just, in my mind, I just, you know, I said, well, if he comes back to the gym Monday, then I know. You got he, he, he really wants to. He really wants to do this. How did and, you feel after? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, go ahead. I'm good. sorry. No, I think he didn't come Monday. He came Tuesday. But he said that. He said, you know, I, I can't come Monday, but I'll be in yeah, the I gym Tuesday. And then I was all right. He was fine. He was. He I got came beat up before. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't nothing different. I just, you know, I was upset because I, I felt like I put a lot of time into it, and that's what I, I think that's what bothers me the most about when I lose. Mm -hmm. Is that how much time I put into the <clears throat> into that one fight, or into not even the one fight? How much time I put into it um, over time? And I think you know, I I feel like I always let myself down, uh, let Ahmad down, um, my family, my friends, everybody who supported me. I feel like I let them down because they they're rooting for me to to do this, to do exactly what I'm saying I'm going to do because they believe in me because of how much work I put into it. So. Uh, that's always bothered me. I mean, I'm talking about way back when I was a kid playing basketball for Stanford Youth. Right. I used to cry when I lost because how much time I put in. It's just like, if I work that hard, I feel like I'm supposed to always win. Right. Well, that's a good way to be. I mean, you, know, you do want success. You do want to pay back for putting that work in. Mm -hmm. When you're when a kid is in the amateur ranks, for, and for both of you here, there's winning, there's losing. Golden Gloves, you're not going to be undefeated usually when you get through those ranks. Um, what is the amateur boxing ranks about? Is, is, it just, is it looking as a training ground? What, what are you looking for as you go through those periods in the amateur ranks? Okay. Well, what I told him when he, when he first started as an amateur, you know, like going from that first fight, you know, what it showed me is that he really cared about it. You know, for you want... Any amateur, any athlete to really care about what they're doing. So, you know, what I told him early on is that this is just, you know, because he had big goals, right? He, he, he aspired to, you know, win the Golden Gloves, win the Nationals, you know, become a professional fighter. So I said, well, listen, we're not going to focus so much on winning and losing. Of course, we want to win every fight we fight. Right. You know, I'm very competitive also. But I said, but this is our training. This is where we learn. We're going to learn. So you got you to gotta be able to understand that we may lose some fights, but as long as we're learning from every experience we have and we're building on it, then it's, then it's all good, right? right. That's, that's the amateurs. In pros, you don't have that luxury, but in the amateurs, you get to, I said, we're gonna, if you want to be a pro, we're going to fight. We're going to fight a lot. Some of those fights we're going to lose as long as we're, we're going to learn from those experiences, we're going to be good. Yeah. And that, that's basically what I was going to say, just to piggyback off of that. Like, really, it's just... Training ground. Now, then you went. How did how did he get, or how did you get to the U.S. national team? How did that uh, that come about? <laughs> it's funny because I really was only doing that. He had me write down the goal, my goals uh, when I first started. I wanted to win the Golden Gloves, become a professional boxer. That was my goals. Along trying to win the Golden Gloves in New York, <clears throat> I would lose because the guys were better than me. So he was like, yo, let's go to the Nationals. You'll fight people that's better than them. You'll come back home. They won't be hard to fight. So we went to the Nationals. Once I lost to the Nationals, I was like, nah, I got to win it because I, I, I need to be the best in right. the country. So we go, we do that. I lose the first three times. I'm at the Nationals. I win the fourth time that I go. Well, I wanted to turn pro, and he told me, yo, you never won the Golden Gloves. <laughs> so I went. 
to go fight the national again that year. I win the nationals. I come home. I still didn't win the Golden Gus, which was my original goal. I win the Golden Gus, and now I'm like, let's turn pro. Right. He's like, well, you just made a spot on Olympic trials. Like, you <laughs> might want to fight that. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Now, when he went out to train, were you? Did you go with him to train with the U.S. team, or did someone else take over for you for a while for during that time? Yeah, you no, he came, well, he came with me. Yeah, when once. we went to the oh we, yeah, we well, went to Puerto Rico together. Oh yeah, we went to yeah. Canada. When we were going, when we would go to, I would go with him for the fights. Okay, we would go for the international fights and stuff like that. For um, uh, and then we would train at our gym, and then if he would go out to the training center sometime, I wouldn't always go with him for that. You know what I mean? How we have trainers out there. Yeah, how is, but how is that working without him? I mean, he, you got, he's got your... You, 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 he didn't do a mutual, much. There's a mutual yeah, trust and all I that, mean, yeah. It, it wasn't a lot of time, but it, it was fine because I kind of already... I already know what he's going to say, really. Okay. I know... Time. I kind Like, when I go to the corner even now, I still could... I, before I get to the corner, I already know what he's going to tell me not to do or <laughs> what to do. It's like, I pretty much know exactly how he wants a fight to look now. Right. Um, but he'll tell me, like, small things that I should fix. Um, but I kind of got a general idea of what what he expects from me. Now, you lost by one point? Yeah, one was, point. And it was, was that the final uh, qualification? Well, or? It was a double. It was a double. So I'm going to be real. I, I probably never said this before. But after I lost in that first final, I, I was done. I was I fought again the next day, but mentally I was already like, cause I I just felt like I didn't lose that fight, and I felt like you know that the amateur <coughs> program was just a little too biased for me, okay. and it, and it kind of was like that for different tournaments that I did that I know I won and I lost because some guy was a favorite, um, mm. and I, I was mentally done after that. I I didn't even want to fight the next day. I did it because I love. Fighting, I right. love the sport. I love com- competition, but I was I was mentally checked out. You know, I I even went home right after the second fight. I had I was supposed to stay there to get my bronze medal, and I and I went home because I was just was like I was done with the program. Now, you're done with the national team. You guys sat down and. But when did the decision come that he was ready to go pro right after that? <laughs> when I jumped out the ring, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. crying. I said, man, I hate this. I'm turning pro. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was definitely, you know, the, you know, we agreed that we'll do the um, Olympic trials. Well, we'll take that as far as it goes. So once, once the trials were over, it was like, it was, we were, no question, going pro. I convinced them to stay on. I convinced them to stay on that long. You know to you know to do the trials, you know, because he he did, he he wanted to go pro because he did. He 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 won the New York Golden Gloves. He won f- the the fighter of the torn- tournament, the Sugar Ray Robinson Award. He won the Nash. He was number one in the country. So it was like, but I was like, yo, how many how many people can say that they had an opportunity to fight in the Olympic trials? Right. You know you exactly. know you know, and when you're young, you know everything seems so far off. Right? When you're older, we can't slow time yeah, down enough, you right? You can't go back. So I'm telling him, like, yo, it's a year, it's a year and a half, it's nothing. Just wait. Just go through it. And he, and he made it to the finals of the, um, the winner's bracket. So right. he lost by one point in the finals of the winner's bracket. Right? right? Fight that he clearly won. You know? Um, but, you know, he lost in the fight. And I, know, I knew it was going to be hard to get him up, to, to, to stay on fight his way back into the winner's bracket in the finals. It, it was a tough feat, you know what I mean? Right. But, you know, and like you, like you said, it was like, you know, it really was biased. They really didn't want, they wanted who they wanted to go to the trials, you know. They wanted the, a younger crop that they can convince to stay on for the next Olympics. But, yeah. you know. Well, it happened to Tyson, too, as well. I mean, a lot of great boxers, you know, go to the trials and don't come through. Now, when, you're, when you have a boxer that's at the stage he was at, What's the next? Is is he ready to just go right in, or what's the next step to get him ready for the pros? What's what's the difference? Is there a difference in it at all? Well, no. You know, you you really want to over prepare for that first fight. You know, you really just um, we our biggest thing is man, we work hard, we train hard, we spar hard. We just we're, we're always we're always going for perfection. Our goals aren't small. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We don't set failure goals. We set big goals. And we train for big goals. So, I mean, 
His goal is to be a multiple world champion, have a multiple weight class world champion, have tons of world championships. Not one, you know what I mean? So right. we're training and we're preparing for that. So in the amateurs, his goal was to become a world champion in the pros. So we, so it was like, we're not gonna just be fighting in Connecticut. We gotta go to New York, and New York's too small. You know what I mean, you know? Big fish, small pond. Right. We wanna be big fish in a big pond. You know what I mean? Because we gotta be prepared to beat everybody to be a world champion. When you look at the professional ranks today, I mean, this, this MMA stuff is really, I think, taking a lot of what could be potentially good fighters out of what is the sweet science. I mean, a lot of guys chose that path. Whereas, uh, what do you, how do you perceive boxing today compared to maybe the way most people remember it in the Sugar Ray Leonard days and the Hagler days and the Tyson days? What do you look at the landscape of boxing to be like right now? Uh, is it just a matter of we're not giving it the coverage it deserves? Is that the, is that the biggest problem? I was just about to say that. I, I think I think now that it, now that we have the Fox, like they put me on Fox on free TV. A lot of people got to see me. A lot of people who haven't seen me fight as an amateur or a pro, and maybe just seen my Instagram, got to see me actually fight. And I I, I got a ton of people uh, DMs, you know, direct messages saying. Like, wow, you're such a great fighter. I hope they keep you on TV. So I, I think now that uh, you know ESPN has picked uh, boxing back up for top rank, uh, I think Golden Boy also. So and, and Fox, Showtime. I think now that there's so much on TV and the zone, the, the zone that that boxing is going to be back. And a lot of people will know fighters. So that way there'll be like bigger fights, uh, more buildups, things like that. Because if you don't know anybody, right. then you don't know them. It doesn't matter how good they are if right. you never heard of them. And how do you feel, as, you know, especially as a, as a coach and manager, and especially having the gym around there? How do you feel about what's going on in boxing right now? Well, I feel that you know MMA, you know, they did burst on the scene, um, you know, you know, and was hitting all the networks and. You know, really, the popularity. A lot of MMA gyms open. Um, you know, at a time where boxing wasn't being covered a lot and kind of was at a low. But you know, competition is always good, right? So right. It, it it really, I feel like it really gave boxing a boost because now you see boxing everywhere. So boxing, like, kind of learned from from MMA. You know, because I think traditionally, you know, boxing is just more of a it's just more of a natural, primal sport for humans. You know what I mean? MMA is kind of like you're taking a lot of other, not, not to knock MMA, right. but you, you got people that want to see just the old sweet science, right? And I think that the promoters, all the boxing promoters and stuff like that kind of took a page from that MMA book. Now you got MMA being covered on Showtime, all their networks, Fox. You got it on ESPN. Yeah. You know, H unfortunately, HBO. Um, canceled their boxing program, which was I think was a big mistake. But you know, you got the zone, you got all these networks that, and all these promoters that are putting boxing back on just regular TV, not paid cable. You're getting it on just regular network TV, you know. And I think just putting it in front of people, I think is, you got American heavyweights. You know, that's the catalyst for boxing. Right. You got to have some American heavyweights. Yeah, you definitely yeah. do. And we got some American heavyweights now. So, yeah, that's a wild and, 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 you know, the heavyweight division and the welterweight division has always been what kept boxing alive. Exactly. You that's know, where, where legend came we out. Got, we got one, Stanford <laughs> yeah. got one of the top, you know, welterweights in the world here in Stanford. And, you know, now we got DeAndre Wilder. You know, we got some big time heavy, heavyweight, you know, heavyweights in the heavyweight division. So I think boxing is, uh, is, has made a big comeback and will continue to make a big comeback. All right, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Thank you, Cordell. Thank you. Thank much. you.